Hello guys, welcome back to Seven Engineering YouTube channel. Please subscribe our channel for daily Seven Engineering videos. In today's lecture, we are going to find out the minimum thickness of one-way slab according to the American Concrete Institute code. So, according to the 318 ACI 31814 table number 9.5.2.1. We can find out the minimum thickness for one way slab according to the ACI 31814 and table number 9.5.2.1. So, in the first column, we have the different support types, and there we have in the second column the shape of the slab and the minimum thickness for each type of the slab. Now, it should be kept in mind that the one way slab means that when the length, the longer span, the ratio of the longer spin to the shorter spin is greater or equal to, equal to 2, then it is known as the one way slab. Let's consider this is any slab. This is the longer spin, let's suppose, represented by L, and this is the shorter spin, represented by B. So, when the ratio of longer span to the shorter span is greater than or equal to 2, then this slip is known as the one-way slip. Otherwise, if it is less than the 2, then it will be known as two-way slip. So, when this is the ratio, then we have one-way slip. So, the ACI provides the different types of the support and the different thickness that should be kept for each type of the one-way slip why we provide the minimum thickness in order to control the deflection for the each type of the slab. Now after determining this ratio that we have one way slab and now we should look into the type of the slab. One way slab. If it is a simply supported or cantilever one in continuous or the both in continuous slab. So accordingly we have different thickness for each type of the one way slab. Now when it is a simply supported slab it means if this is a slab, let's suppose. So, if this is a slab condition where all of the end of the beam are simply supported and this is the length of the beam, sorry, length of the slab, then the minimum thickness for this slab will be equal to the L divided by 20. Similarly, if it is a cantilever one way slab, is a slab this length of L then its minimum thickness will be equal to the L by 10 if it's a one way one in continuous slab one in continuous one way slab not two way slab so its minimum thickness so this means one in is continuous one in continuous means that one in is free here it is continuous in this case, the minimum thickness for the one-way slab will be equal to the L by 24. If the both ends are continuous, this end is also continuous, and also this end is also continuous or free. So in this case, the minimum thickness for that one-way slab will be equal to the L divided by 28. Now it should be also kept in mind that L here is this pain length in the direction of the bell neck. This L is not is not a factor length or the clear spin, but it is the spin length in the direction of the bending. In all of these cases, this L is the spin length of the slips in the direction of the bending. So accordingly, we have to determine the length of the beam, length of the slab, sorry. Now, for all these thickness of the beams is valid only, this all thickness of the beam is only valid when there is a steel bar of strength 420 megapascal. If we have 420 megapascal strength of the steel bar used in the slabs, then we can use this formula in order to find out the minimum thickness of one way slab. If it is not 420 megapascal, if it is not 
420 megapascal other than the 420 megapascal it may be for example 500 or something else then we must have to multiply this h, h value with the factor h multiply with the then we will multiply this h minimum thickness of one whistlet with the factor 0 0.4 plus Fy divided by 700 with Fy is the yield strength of the steel bar other than the 420 megapascal. So this factor should be multiplied with the minimum thickness of one with slate in order to determine the minimum thickness of the slates when the yield strength of the steel bar is not equal to 120. If it is equal to 120 then simply 420, when it is equal to 420 then simply we can use this formula, these formulas. But if it is different from 420, then according to the ACI, this table 9.5.2.1, we should multiply this minimum thickness with that factor in order to find out the minimum thickness. Hope you guys understand and don't forget to subscribe our channel for daily civil engineering videos. Thank you for watching our video.